what they are. So a limit is the value that a function approaches or gets really, really, really close to as the inputs of that function with x values approach some other value that you're interested in. So here, the way you're usually going to see it written is the limit as x approaches c of f of x is equal to l. So this means that as your x values get really, really close to c, then the output of f of x gets really, really close to l. So we don't care what the value of the function f of x actually is at c. That's not the question a limit is answering. Um, what we're actually looking at is what value does it get close to. So here, in this kind of random curve that I've drawn, uh, as you, know, you can think of it as dragging your cursor along the function from either side. And as it gets really close to, as your inputs get really close to c, what value is your function getting close to? And here you can see that the output of the function is l because that actually is the value of, of the function if this is a nice continuous function. Okay, so we can do this with functions uh, that have issues with them and maybe they're not nice and continuous, right? So we, we're gonna look at a couple of cases. So one case is this, right? Where the function is continuous um, and you have, so if you know you have something that's nice and continuous uh, then this means that the limit as x approaches c of f of x is going to be equal to l, and that's going to be equal to f of c. Okay, So it's actually going to be equal to the value of the function at c, because if you get really, really close to c, then your function is going to be getting closer and closer to the function's value at c. Um, so that's kind of case one. Case two is we can have a discontinuous function with a whole. Okay. So if we have a hole, maybe we have something like this, right? Where this is supposed to be a, you know, a point that is missing. So that I have C here and then L is going to be here and it has a hole here, but it doesn't matter. I can write, right? If I write, what is F of C? I'm not going to know. F of C is, is undefined. It doesn't have a value, but the limit as X approaches C of F of X is still going to be equal to L. Because as we approach C from the right or the left, we're getting closer and closer and closer to L as our output. Okay, so that's kind of case number two. Case number three is uh, similar to case number two, where we have a function with a hole, but this time the function is defined um, at that point. So let's say this is C, and you know we have these two spots. We have A and B as two possible outputs. Which one do you think the limit actually is? Do you think it's going to be A or B? Think about that for a second. We want to pause and ponder it. Uh, so the answer here is if I am dragging a cursor, right, closer and closer to C as my inputs, the value of Y, or the F of X that I'm approaching is not A, it's B, okay? So even though the function's value at C is A, I don't care. The limit asks you what value is it approaching and that value is B. So here the limit as x approaches c of f of x is equal to, and I'm just going to change this to be l, okay, l, even though the function at c does not equal l. And that's okay, because these are two different things, right? One is asking what is the function actually at c, and the other one is asking what is the function approaching at c, okay? So uh, limits, just like any other mathematical object, has some properties that we should talk about, okay? So the first one being some indifference. If I have the limit as x goes to c of f of x plus some other function g of x, uh, I'm allowed to split this up. This is equal to the limit as x goes to c of f of x plus the limit as x goes to c of g of x. Okay, so it's, it's nice and additive there. Same thing, so property one, property two, multiplication works as well. So if I want to do, uh, if I have the limit as x goes to c of f of x times g of x, that is equal to the limit of f of x times the limit of g of x. So limits are nice in that they work the way that you wish kind of all mathematical objects would behave, where they act exactly like you would kind of expect them to. Okay. Uh, property three uh, is multiplication by a constant. So if I have the limit as x goes to c of k times f of x, where k is a constant, I can just pull out the k. I get k times 
the limit as x goes to c of f of x. And finally, for property number four, um, if I have division, right, it works pretty much the same way as multiplication, where if I have the limit as x goes to c of f of x over g of x, then I can write that as uh, the limit as x goes to c of f of x divided by, I just don't really have a space to put it over, so limit, uh, the limit as x goes to c of g of x. Okay, so all the properties work very nicely in just the way that you would expect. But sometimes uh, functions look a little weirder than the cases that we've gone through, um, and we have to find, uh, we have to kind of change what we're, what we're looking for a little bit. Um, so let's look at a function that, uh, let's say, let's look at this. I'm going to do my best to draw this. Okay, so here, I'm going to label a couple of points here. So we're going to have A, B, C, D, E, and F. Okay, and we're going to have a function that looks like this. It goes like up around as a whole, and then here it jumps up to here, it goes across to here, and then it drops down to here, and then this goes over to here, because why not? And then this goes down here, over to here, and then goes up here. Okay, now let's say that this is one and this is two. So here, if I ask what the limit is as x approaches a, that's a really weird question because there's nothing to the left of it, so I can't approach from the left. But on the right, there is a function. So this is where one-sided limits come in, okay? So if you see something that looks like this, uh, the limit as x approaches c, it's a little plus sign kind of in the exponent, it means as x approaches c from the right. So if I'm doing that for a, as x approaches c from the right, what value am I approaching? I'm approaching one. So I would write, I'm gonna kind of do that to some, to some columns here. Um, so for A, it would be one. I could also have the limit as X approaches C from the left. From the left, it is undefined, okay? Because there is nothing to the left. I can't approach it to the left. And then I can ask, well, what is the limit as X approaches C? Now you might be able to guess that this is only defined if these match, okay? So we can actually put a pretty strong condition here where I can say, and I'll just write this over in the corner, that the limit as x approaches c uh, equal of f of x equals l if and only if. So you see this iff means if and only if. This means that if this condition is true, then the one I'm about to write must be true. And if this condition is false, the one I'm about to write must be false. And the opposite is also true. If the condition I'm about to write is false, this must be false. And if it's true, this must be true. So if and only if, the limit as x approaches c from the right of f of x equals the limit as x approaches c from the left of f of x, and that these both equal l, okay? If this doesn't happen, then there is no limit. In other words, the limit is undefined. So here I would say the limit is undefined. And then we can also ask, well, what's the value of the function uh, at that point? So the function here is actually equal to 1. So let's try to go through and do this for the rest of them, just so you can kind of get a sense for how these how these work. So we'll do some really not straight lines. All right. So for B, the limit as x approaches C from the right. So from the right, I'm getting closer and closer to the value of 2. From the left, I'm getting closer and closer to the value of 1. Do these match? No. So this is undefined. And what's the value of f of C? It doesn't have 1. They're both open holes, so this is also undefined. For C, as we approach from the right, we're getting closer to one. As we approach from the left, we're getting closer to two. The value of the function is actually two, right? So I can put that in. And these two limits don't match, so this is undefined. For D, if I look at D, the value from the right it's approaching is one. From the left, it's getting closer to two. And overall, these don't match, so it's undefined. The value of the function is actually two. Uh, and, and keep in mind as we're talking about this, like. Yeah, the value of the function is actually two. It doesn't mean that like this limit is wrong in some way. The limit is just asking, if I go from the right, what am I approaching? You're approaching one. The limit really is one from the right, and that's fine. It doesn't match the value of the function, it doesn't have to. E, 
the limit from the right and from the left is both going to are both going to be one. That means that the overall limit will also be one, and the function is also one. Now, even if I change this, right? If I got rid of this and I just put the point up here, then the function would be two, but all the other stuff would stay the same. The limit from the right and the left would still match, so the overall limit would still be one, even though the value of the function is different, and that's fine. For f, as I approach from the right, I can't. It's undefined. There's nothing to the right except my math. Uh, and from the left, we get closer to two. Uh, these don't match, so overall the limit is undefined, and then the value of the function is two. Okay. So that's kind of how to think about and go about uh, writing and uh, using limits, both one-sided and overall.